Marty, I want to ask you about the Milotaric. Mark mentioned the Milotaric. You think it's time for Milotaric to come back? I know you're involved in the SWOG trials. What do you think Milotaric will ever come back? I think that it, it may come back. I think there is uh, several uh, uh, exciting roles. Uh, one is less important today, and that is an APL. It's a very effective agent in APL. APL cells actually express CD33 among the most uh, uh, um, extensively uh, than many other uh, AMLs. So it's possible, although our therapy today for APL is so good, I'm not sure it'll be okay. needed there. But there are data from, particularly from the uh, British group, suggesting that Mylotarg or an anti-CD33 antibody may play a role in core binding fatty leukemia. So I think either Mylotarg or perhaps, as Mark suggested, if, the, the new Seattle Genetics anti-CD33. If you're in the UK, and you have core binding factor, you, yeah, that's you can actually get part of the standard of care there. And the most yeah. conservative the place. Yes. yes. And they approve uh, it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Richard, for you, just before we conclude the session today, we hear about immune therapy a lot. Uh, nivolumab, pembrolizumab, and other agents. Do you think there's a role for these drugs in epiglutinum? Well, I think there's a role to study them. Uh, right now, the signal is not great enough to write a prescription for pembrolizumab, which would be extremely expensive, for example, in AML, except for one important uh, area, uh, people from our place, Matt Davids and others, published a paper in New England Journal of Medicine describing the use of ipilimumab in people who've relapsed after AML people who've relapsed after transplant. I mean, there, there was some other diseases too, but there was some responses, but particularly in people at extramedullary leukemia. So that's something we need to learn more about. Obviously, the milieu is completely different in the post-transplant relapse setting where there's still some donor cells around, but I think we need to check, that's look into great. those. Well, this has been extremely informative. Before we end this discussion today, I'd like to get final thoughts from each of our panelists. I want to start with Dr. Erba. Well, I think they're going to, the challenge that we're going to have now is uh, trying to decide how to combine these agents, but more importantly, as we look at targeted therapies, really trying to better define who are the patients who are going to benefit, which is going to be a challenge because these are, as we heard from Rich, AML is very heterogeneous with small subsets, and it may be that we, make, we can move away from chemotherapy in very defined subsets like we have in APL, which was one of our major advan advances. But for the time being, uh, in the management of AML, I see chemo chemotherapy is not going away, uh, as excited as I am as all, all of these other agents. Okay. Dr. Levis? So uh, the cynic is tempted to say, you know, we're still using seven plus three. What has really changed? I actually remain remarkably optimistic. I think the survival curves are going up. Yes. Not just because of supportive care, but because in fact, we're, we understand the disease better and know who to treat. And so I think in fact, uh, we are gonna continue to push the survival curves up and up in incremental fashion, but I'm sure. a patient man. Okay. Dr. Stone? I share the optimism of my colleagues. Uh, the challenge is going to be proper use of these agents in a carefully designed, rational way. Uh, yeah, it's great that some of these drugs are approved for other cancers, but we have to be careful about using them in a willy-nilly fashion. Both we might be harming patients, adding the cost of medical care, and not learning anything. So I certainly support prospective clinical trials to figure out what's what in this disease. And Dr. Talman, I, final I, thought? I continue to also believe that there really has never been a more exciting time in our field. I think the future will be about combinations and collaborations. As, as we are dissecting subsets, genetic, cytogenetic, molecular genetic subsets of AML into smaller groups, we're going to uh, have to continue to collaborate uh, around the world. Well, that's great. Well, thank you all for your contribution to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.